Is YouTube even ready for HDR? There's a lot of new capture products that have shown up on the market, like Elgato's HD60S Plus or 4K60 Pro, Mark II and S Plus, you know, that's coming soon, that can capture and pass through HDR footage for your 4K HDR monitors or TVs from your Xbox One X, PS4 Pro, and so on. But is YouTube actually ready for you to put that content up there? I've had a lot of questions about the workflow for actually using these things. I've talked about, you know, whether or not they can do it, but the actual workflow of using it kind of remains a mystery to a lot of people. So I hope to debunk that today in this video sponsored by Elgato. This video is sponsored by the Elgato HD60S Plus. This is a capture card I was using for all of the footage you'll see in this video. It's a USB 3.0 external capture card that allows you to pass through up to 4K 60fps HDR footage and capture 1080p 60fps HDR footage or SDR tone mapped footage from your favorite game console, PC, or basically anything with HDMI output. The HD60S Plus is currently available for $30 off at Best Buy and BestBuy.com. Links in the description below. I'm Impulse Fox, and HDR is quite a strange phenomenon that has taken over recently, and a lot of Elgato's recent capture cards now support not only 4K pass-through or 4K capture, depending on which one you have, but HDR pass-through and or capture. And there's a lot that goes into it with regards to actually utilizing this new format. Now, HDR specifically is high dynamic range. It means that there's a bigger range, the dynamic range, between the brightest point on screen and the darkest point on screen for a much higher contrast ratio, which helps makes things look a lot better, you know, you get a lot more vivid colors, you get a lot more detail in what would normally be blown out highlights, like where there's a sky you can see behind me, or in dark shadows, and just makes for an overall, you know, better presentation. But it is an entirely different video format and isn't as compatible with older SDR related screens, devices, or other videos. And so actually making content in 4K HDR? takes a little bit of work. First and foremost, you need a capture card that supports capturing HDR. Elgato has a few different devices at this point, the HD60S Plus, the 4K60 Pro Mark II, the 4K60S Plus, which I will have videos on soon. They can do it. And so to set that up, you first need to connect your console to the HDMI input, put the output to your HDR compatible monitor, and then go ahead and open up the console settings go in. So on PS4 Pro, you go to video output settings and under allow HDR, you set it to automatic and then you can view display information to see if it actually detects that your screen is enabled for HDR. Over on Xbox, uh, you go to your video output mode, set it to 4K or 1080p, whichever you like. And then under video modes, there's a checkbox for allow HDR 10. Make sure that's checked. So that's console setup. Software setup, you're also going to need to grab you Elgato's 4K capture utility. You can't actually capture full HDR in OBS Studio. It doesn't support it. It doesn't support the 10-bit format that is required for HDR, but you can still use OBS for capturing and just playing in HDR with what's called tone mapping. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But for now, go ahead and open up Elgato's 4K capture utility, install it if you don't have it already, go to your settings and make sure that your graphics card is selected for capturing HDR. You will need an NVIDIA 10 series or newer graphics card as it needs to use the HEVC encoder on those cards to actually capture the HDR format. It's just required. You know, normal SDR content can be H.264, but HDR needs that HEVC encoder on 10 series or newer graphics cards. I'm using an RTX Titan, but you don't need that series of a graphics card at all. <laughs> under settings, you have your, you know, capture format and your input format is listed under the device settings. You need to check if you want to actually capture HDR to enable HDR recording. You'll have to reset your flashback recording, hit OK, and then you're good to go to start capturing. So I've captured some God of War, some Halo Master Chief collection. It's been a little while since I've held a controller, so sorry about that. Uh, not performing the best right now. <laughs> and in terms of capturing, you have, you know, by hitting record and then hitting stop record when you're done, you now have an HDR file. And actually, if you open it up in something like Media Info, which is a program that gives you a lot of information about the video codec and things like that in your specific files, you can see that it says it's HEVC, uh, BT2020 is the color space for HDR. So that gives you your file. Now, if you upload it to YouTube, you can just upload it straight to YouTube without editing, of course, if you just want to see what it looks like. Once it has time to process, you can then play it back. Now, the cool thing about YouTube and, you know, their readiness for HDR 
is that if you play back the file and your computer is not in HDR, you can still view the file. It actually does an HDR to SDR tone map, which basically converts the colors because typically like if you're trying to play back the file directly and your system isn't set up for HDR, then you're going to see all this gray washed out. The colors don't look right or make any sense because it's a different format that your screen cannot display in its current mode. It's going to look pretty garbage. Well, YouTube does this tone map processing, which takes that gray goobly boop and converts it over to what you would expect to see, like what you actually see on your monitor here. It's not going to be the full dynamic range because it's converting it from HDR to SDR, which is standard dynamic range, a little bit more limited, but it brings those colors back and back and makes it look like it's supposed to for your viewing. YouTube does that automatically. So if you watch it on a non HDR screen, you just get a normal looking gameplay video. But if you enable HDR for your monitor and windows and then refresh your browser window, you can view it in HDR and then you can play it back in HDR and you know switch between them as long as you're enabling that toggle within windows itself for your monitor. Now playing back the, the files locally, again, you do need to enable HDR on your specific monitor within windows, but I have found success with pot player and MPC HC. Those are my two favorite media playing apps for actually playing back HDR locally without running into any issues and VLC sort of works, but it has some issues. Now you can actually play the files back in the 4k capture utility program. However, it doesn't currently have the ability to play back in HDR. So what it will basically do is just a quick rough HDR to SDR tone map that it while it's playing it back just so you can watch it in real time, but you're not getting the full HDR experience unless you open it up in YouTube or a dedicated media player app. Now, if you are just concerned about playing in HDR and you don't need to capture HDR or you need to be able to live stream, well, then you can still open up the HD 60 S plus or your 4k 60 pro or what have you in OBS. And then your Elgato capture card will automatically do an HDR to SDR tone map, converting those colors over for OBS in real time so that you can still play and enjoy your full fat 4k HDR experience on your screen, but your viewers still see a standard perfectly fine for them SDR experience on their screen, which is really freaking cool. So simply add it as a video capture device as normal and pretty much leave it on default and you're good to go. You can play in HDR. You don't notice any difference, but your viewers see the normal formatted video and you're good to go. Unfortunately, you can't stream in HDR, but again, there aren't even really streaming services that support the HDR format anyway. So it's not really an issue right now. It's only supported for uploaded video content and that's okay. Now you can capture SDR and OBS XSplit, whatever program you're using your Elgato capture card in already, thanks to that tone mapping capability just by default, but you're not limited to just using those apps. You can actually still do it in Elgato's 4k capture utility back in those settings where I showed you the checkbox to enable HDR recording. If you uncheck that, then it will do the HDR to SDR tone mapping in your recording and just record SDR files locally as well. So that's really handy to keep in mind. There are some people who prefer using the, you know, the, the first party supported app because 4k capture utility has, you know, logging options where you can keep track of what game you were playing, what the clip name is, things like that. So you have that option available to you. Okay. So we got recording HDR, uploading it to YouTube, playing in HDR, but streaming it in SDR. Thanks to tone mapping on board. But if you want to actually edit those videos, it gets a little more complicated. We're going to flip over to the desktop and I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of the editing workflow for HDR videos in Adobe Premiere Pro, you know, as quick of a run through as we possibly can, just so you can see what that looks like, because there are some considerations you need to keep in mind. All right, I'm here in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2020, and I'm first going to show you how to edit a full HDR video, and then we'll change the HDR to SDR before uploading as well and show you how both of those work. So I've got a new project made. I'm just going to drag in one of my HDR captured files from 4K Capture Utility. I'm going to right click it, make a new sequence. That's fine. We got the full footage here. I'm going to go ahead and trim it up to a part I know, you know, a clip I wanted to save from this video. So right here. And then, yep, right there where I die is fine. We've got a nice little clip here to edit out. I'm going to hit Control M to bring up the export menu. H.264 is fine. I'm going to use one of the YouTube presets, 1080p Full HD, but you're not ready yet. First, even though I always recommend unchecking this for normal SDR uploads, I'm going to recommend checking render at maximum depth. Next, under profile for encode settings, you need to change this from high to high 10. High 10 is how you enable HDR features. So first you need to check 
Rec 2020 color primaries. And next, there's high dynamic range. Now, you can mess around with the HDR10 metadata. There's a lot to it that I'm not really going to recommend. You know, you shouldn't need. But if you want to customize things a little bit here, you can. I'm going to go ahead and set the bit rate here. We're just using VBR one pass. And again, for HDR specifically, I would recommend checking maximum render quality. Go ahead and hit export. Let it do its thing. It's going to take a couple minutes depending on your system. Beautiful power of Threadripper and Titan RTX here as I get to render this, you know, HDR footage in real time while recording. But be right back. Now, once we've uploaded that to YouTube, we now have the option to view it just as a normal you know sdr version because as i mentioned youtube does the hdr to sdr transcoding so we have our clip here looks fine ready to go all good however if i kick it over to hdr we'll actually be able to watch this in hdr too all right, just doing this on my phone real quick because it's easier here i enabled hdr in windows now we're going to pull up my browser hit refresh and now we have the video in full glorious HDR, and if we look at the quality options, we now have some of the HDR quality options available. It's still transcoding some of them, but we can actually watch the full video in beautiful high dynamic range. Perfect. All right, so that was just how to edit a full HDR video. If you want to use the HDR footage in a SDR video or otherwise just convert it to SDR, go to your effects section and just search for SDR. There's an effect called SDR conform drag it onto your clip go to effect controls and there's pretty much nothing you can you need to do you can adjust a couple different settings to basically adjust how the contrast looks um, and how the you know the the tone mapping itself turns out but this more or less conforms it you don't get a whole lot of control but it's a slot in effect that conforms it to SDR and you can see here we've got a little bit of brightness so you can kind of control for that to try to keep it from blowing out as much Adjust to your liking if you like, or just slap on the default. Most people won't notice the difference. It's fine. I'm going to reset it back to standard. This is more or less fine. Again, hit Control M to export, and then use your normal export settings. Don't use High 10 or Rec 2020 or any of that. Just use your normal settings and export that. Something I did want to note is that if you are editing HDR footage to deliver in HDR, Everything you include on your timeline must also be created for that Rec 2020 HDR color space. So that means any graphics, intros, overlays, things like that need recreated with that color space as a focus or else you're going to get some weird stuff. So for example, I imported here my little subscribe button lower third and in my preview, since I'm editing in SDR, you know, everything looks kind of weird, but that looks totally fine. But then when you actually export it out in an HDR video, even when it's tone mapped in YouTube for SDR, you can see here, here it is super dark and washed out because that's an HDR color space with all the higher contrast and range and an SDR element that doesn't quite fit that color space and it just ends up not working. So that is very important to keep in mind that your, your face cam footage, your overlay graphics, literally everything has to be made with a Rec 2020 color space and integrated here as such or you're going to end up with bad results, which is why tone mapping to SDR is a pretty good option in your editing. And that's it. Hopefully with this video, you are prepared to start making content in HDR if you so desire, or you know the considerations to look out for if you decide maybe that's not for you and you just want to play in HDR and keep editing and streaming and things like that in SDR, thanks to the tone mapping option. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for Elgato for sponsoring it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Check out the uh, Best Buy link in the description below if you want to save some money on a HD60S Plus for yourself. Uh, subscribe for more tech education in SDR. I'll see you next time.